a very good morning girls for today's class we're going to discuss uh, the poetry by Matthew Arnold Dover Beach but before that as I've already already provided you with the PPT I would like to discuss I would like to tell you some more things about Victorian era so Victorian era was a period of Queen Victoria's reign from 20th June 1837 until her death on January uh, 22nd 1901 Right? So, this includes all the literature produced during the reign of Queen Victoria. The period witnessed a tremendous change in the accepted form of literature, art and music. The Victorian poetry succeeded the Romantic movement, but there were radical differences to be observed in this age. Some of the defining characteristics of Victorian poetry were that the poets were focusing on sensory elements, Recurring themes of religion, science and the conflict between them were there. Interest in medieval fables and legends was there. Most of the Victorian poets used imagery and the sense to convey the scenes of struggles between religion and science and the ideas about nature and romance. So if you're going to talk about another characteristics of Victorian poetry was the sentimentality. So, as I've told you that Victorian era was a period of great political, social and economic change. And why was that so? Because empire recovered from the loss of American colonies and entered a period of rapid expansion. So, there was rapid expansion that was happening. If you're going to talk about the major poets of that time, of Victorian era, so Tennyson, Robert Browning, Elizabeth Barrett Browning, Matthew Arnold, Christina Rossetti, Dante Gabriel Rossetti, Oscar Wilde, W. B. H. Rudyard Kipling, Thomas Hardy, Hopkins. So these were the major poets of that time. Comics were, were comic verses were started to being created. Magazines such as Punch, Fun Magazine, they came into existence. Victorian era sees a rapid rise of the middle class. Why? Because of the anti-slavery movement was there. And to understand the progress as scientific rationality. And, uh, you know, uh, this offering to identify means and solutions to social problems. So, social reform focused on ending slavery from women and children, uh, prevent crimes. Doctrine of agnosticism was there, that is, whether or not God exists and suddenly became a uh, popular topic. So, people were discussing about it. Disbelievers at that time called the free thinkers, uh, free thinkers, Problems uh, that people were facing uh, was the working class, overpaid youth, harsh factory condition, bad, you know, bad housing, poor sanitization, excessive drinking was there and religious decline was there. Extended families were less common at that time. People started to live in nuclear families. Nuclear family became both the ideal and the reality. So, novels were the leading genre by the end of the era and gothic fiction came into existence. Entertainment uh, uh, of the people varied by social class. Period before it, uh, people before this period were interested in literature, theatre and the art, music, drama. But people at that time, people in the age of Victorian era were doing gambling, casinos, prostitution was there, British circus marked as the golden age, uh, spectacles, paranormal events came into existence, mesmerizing was there, communication with dead, ghost conjuring, these are the things that came into existence. So people were, uh, you know, entertaining themselves using all these things. So industrialization increased, especially in textiles and machinery. The condition was getting better in England because of all these things, because of all these changes that are happening. So, the condition of England was getting better. So, Victorians were uh, impressed by science and progress and felt that they could improve society. So, with the help of science, they thought that they could improve society. Apart from that, uh, railways uh, was a big time achievement because of the industrial revolution so uh, matthew arnold belongs to this particular era was a victorian poet a literary and a social critic as well and he was known specially for his attacks classical attacks on the contemporary taste and manners of the aristocrats uh, high class people the commercial middle class and the common people 
so Matthew Arnold has been categorized as a sage writer, a type of writer who chastises and instructs the reader on contemporary social issues. Uh, in 1949, he published his first book of poetry, that is The Straight Reveller. In 1850, Wordsworth died. So Arnold published his memorial verses on the older poet in Fraser magazine. In 1852, Arnold published his second volume of poems. 1853, he published uh, more uh, poems. And you know, this process uh, goes on. In 1865, Arnold published essays in criticism, the first series, and you know, things like that. Arnold's work as a literary critic uh, began with 1853, preface to the poems. In it, he attempted to explain his extreme act of self-censorship in excluding the dramatic poems with its emphasis on importance of subject in poetry uh, and all these things that are there. I have also provided you a list of all his poetry and prose. So as a critic, Arnold is essentially a moralist and has a very definite idea about what poetry should and should not be. A poetry of revolt against moral ideas, he says, is a poetry of revolt against life. And a poetry of uh, indifference to moral ideas is a poetry of indifference to life. So cultural and critical values seems to be synonymous for Arnold. And so these are the things that he was doing. And, uh, you know, people uh, somehow relate him to Aristotle because Aristotle's critic owes alliance to the artist, but uh, uh, Arnold's critic has a duty towards society. So these are the things that were happening at that time. But if you're going to talk about the poem Dover Beach, so Dover Beach is a lyrical poem by Matthew Arnold. It was first published in 1867, but uh, the most likely date of it being written is 1851. It is one of the most celebrated poems by Matthew Arnold, uh, and uh, a writer, an educator of the Victorian era. And the poem expresses a crisis of faith, with the speaker acknowledging the diminished standing of Christianity, with the speaker sees as being unable to withstand the rising tide of scientific discoveries because a lot of scientific discoveries were there so people were uh, ha people started to have uh, you know less understanding of christianity of uh, religion so um, so no, so this is the thing that he is talking about and what is the place that he is talking about what is dover beach so the title local and subject of the poem's descriptive opening lines is the shore of english ferry port of dover in kent facing calais in france Right? According to a literary critic, Dover Beach is a difficult poem to analyze. Uh, the beach, however, is bare with only a hint of humanity in a light that gleams and is gone. So written in 1851, is inspired by his two visits uh, with his wife uh, that he made to the south coast of England. It's a dramatic monologue. So I hope you know what a dramatic monologue is. So dramatic monologue is... When a single person is speaking, but the presence of the other person is felt. So you would, uh, the moment you're going to read the poetry, you would understand that he's speaking to somebody. Though the person, the other person, the listener doesn't respond to it, but you could feel the presence of that person. So that is a dramatic monologue. So where the poet expresses his frustration and hopelessness of the more modern chaotic word. He also expresses his views. That's this kind of situation where there is neither joy, nor love, nor light, nor certitude. Certitude is certainty, nor peace, nor help of pain has been created by decline of faith. And religious faith to be precise. So it says all these conditions, all those suffering, all those mis miseries that human beings are facing is because of the decline of faith. But, and the poem begins with a straightforward description of nature and the speaker calling his beloved to see the beautiful sea and to hear the sound of the waves. So at the beginning, it would seem to be a love poem or even a sonnet. But in the end, by the end, uh, you would understand that, uh, you know, uh, this is bringing a sense of melancholy to the speaker's mind. Uh, and he's uh, doing what he compares faith with the residing tides. And he says, uh, speaker urges his lady love to be true to one another as the new world 
that seems to be so beautifully apparently does not evoke much hope for him so let's now begin with the poem and your writer says uh, the sp- uh, the sea is calm tonight the tide is full the moon lies fair so the sea is here refers to the english channel so the sea is calm tonight the tide is full the moon lies fair so the moonlight is reflected on the gulf of dover and it looks lovely so you have a complete moon the tide is full it's high tide and you know the moon is getting reflected on the water upon the straits on the french coast the light gleams and is gone the cliffs of england stand so upon the straits upon the straits is the gulf between dover and calais calais as i've told you is across the english channel on the french coast and the light gleams gleam is to shine faintly or dimly and is gone the cliffs of england stands and what is standing there the cliffs the uh, the area the uh, you know the hills that are there are standing of england are standing glimmering and vast out in a tr- tranquil bay tranquil is something which is silent something which is not making any noise come to the window sweet is the night air and now he's calling his wife come to the window and that is why i said that it's a dramatic monologue because after you read this that you know that the p- person is speaking your poet is speaking and the presence of the other person is felt because he's calling his wife so come to the window sweet is the night air and how is the night air he says sweet is the night air so you should come here come along with me only from the long line of spray uh from the long line of spray spray uh, here refers to the drops of water carried by the wind have you ever been in rainfall have you ever uh, experienced rain so the moment uh it started to rain and you have wind and uh, so it, it you know it uh, it touches you so that is the spray that he is talking about where the sun meets the moon blanched land and where the sun meets sun is doing what is meeting the moon blanched land and what kind of a land it is whitened something blanch uh, is when you uh, you know spread over so whitened by the light of the moon so your land has been whitened by the light of the moon listen you hear the grating roar and he's asking uh, his wife to listen to the word uh, to hear the grating roar roar is harsh sound grating is harsh sound caused by the rolling of the pebbles on the sea because majority of the sea uh, seas in uh, england are uh, you know they had pebbles instead of sand they have pebbles so listen you hear the grating roar of pebbles which the waves draw back and fling fling is to throw at their return up the high strand so what is this water doing is because it is full tide so what this water is doing this water is carrying Uh, uh the stones with them backward and then throwing it at the sea beach high at the sea beach begin and cease and then again begin with tremendous uh, cadence slow and bring so what is the begin and cease to start and to stop so it's a continuous process that is going on so started and stopping and then again begin with tremendous cadence cadence is something which is rhythmic musical so uh, the throwing of the stones is creating a music to the sounds of the poet slow and bring the eternal note of sadness but till the time you thought that it is a love poem as i have also mentioned it to you but it is bringing what the eternal note of sadness so all these things that he is talking about is bringing him the note of sadness arnold he uh, who is sick of materialism and despair of the victorian uh, and despair of the victorian age find the sea always striking a note of sadness so it is not happy for him it is uh, what kind of feeling that he is getting out of it is the feeling of melancholy the feeling of sadness and then he says sophocles long ago heard it on the asian and it brought into his mind the turbid ad ab and flow of human misery 
We find also in the sound a thought, hearing it by the distant neuron. See, so he is remembering what? He is remembering Sophocles. Who is Sophocles? He is a philosophical poet and he was there from 495 to 406 BC. Uh, he is one of Arnold's uh, favorite poet. Uh, his heroes, uh, whatever works Sophocles has created, his heroes are the symbol of tragic human fate. So he says, Sophocles long ago heard it on the Asian. Asian is a part of Mediterranean uh, Sea near Greece and it brought into his mind the turbide ebb and flow. Ebb and flow is rise and fall uh, in life of human misery. So he says, uh, the kind of uh, feeling that Arnold is having right now of melancholy, sadness, of this era getting into a lot of materialism. But he says, Sophocles also had this feeling because his heroes are the symbols of tragic human fate. And he says he has heard it long ago in where? In Mediterranean Sea near Greece. Into his mind the turbid ebb and flow. Ebb and flow is rise and fall of human misery. We find also in the sound a thought. So his wife, he says, his wife also may be experiencing similar thought of melancholy by listening to the sound of the waves of the See, so it says V. V is here for him and for his wife. Hearing it by this distant northern sea. So he, they are hearing it where? The distant northern sea. The, the English channel to the north of Greece. So it says I am having all this feeling. Similar feelings Sophocles had and he has written it in, uh, in his work. And he says it's not only I but he is referring to his wife that she is also having the same kind of feeling. And then he says the sea of faith so now he's comparing he's making a comparison of sea with faith with religion so religious faith as sea was once too at the full and round earth's shore lay like the folds of bright girdles flood but now i only hear its melancholy long withdrawing roar retreating to the breath of the night wind down the vast edges tree and naked shingles of the wood. So he is comparing, he has used a metaphor and he says the sea of faith. But there was decay. So was once too at the full. So people had honest religious, uh, religious convictions at that time. And round earth short. People, what is round earth short? That people all around the world had honest religious convictions uh, before lay like the folds of bright girdle flirt flirt is something which is closed an ornament for the waist but now i only hear but now now he's talking about the victorian era the time of the victorian age but now i only hear it's melancholy long withdrawing road so the faith is residing faith is going back like the waves of the See, so like the waves are getting backwards. Similarly, people are not uh, uh, the way they have been earlier. People have also residing with their faith, retreating to the breath. Retreating is something which is now leaving the world, world and making it barren and dry. Of the night wind down the vast uh, edges drear. So as the waves reside, the slow look, the sea looks naked. So similarly, with the going of the religion, the human beings are going to look naked and how they are going to look uh, naked because they're going to have they're going to be half melancholy in their life they're going to have sadness in their life because religions give you a kind of a faith so without that faith their life uh, seems to be very dull so retreating to the breath so it's now leaving them going away from them of the night wind down the vast edges and naked shingles of the world what is naked shingles shingles are the uh, the stones and the pebbles that are there. So the moment uh, the, uh, the sea waves are going to go backward, what is going to happen? It's going to leave the stones and the pebbles that are there on the beach naked. So uh, like uh, the, this, the, this, uh, the stones and the pebbles are being naked. Similarly, human life has become naked. Why? Because of the uh, uh, because of degradation of uh, faith. Right, because there is no faith uh, in God now. Our love, let us be true to one another for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams, so various, so beautiful, so.
so new so now he's again uh, incorporating his wife into uh, into the scene and he says ah love let us be true so the traditional values and religion are fast crumbling down there is no joy or comfort anywhere and in such state of uh, disintegration love can only sustain mankind so if if you want to sustain mankind if you want to be happy in your life what is the only single way of doing it it says love is the only way of uh, you know sustaining mankind so that that is why he says ah love let us be true to one another so let us be loyal towards each other let us love each other for the world which seems to lie before us like a land of dreams so he says the world seems to be colorful but in reality it is like a empty dream it is like a grand illusion so he says we might you know experience this is because we are talking but in reality so we might experience that the life is very colorful because we are having all sorts of things but in reality if you're going to have a broad perspective if you're going to look at it in a broad perspective you will realize that this uh, you know uh, this world which is uh, there before us the, the world which seems to lie before us is like a land of dreams uh, it's like a grand illusion so various various is so full of variety so beautiful yes it is very beautiful so new that really neither joy nor love nor light nor certitude nor peace nor help for pain and we are here as on a darkling plane so he says it may look beautiful to you but in reality hath really hath really has really it doesn't have this really what uh, is which is not there it has neither joy no happiness is there nor love no love is there nor light no hope is left light here may refers to as hope that there is no hope left no certitude no certitude is no certainty nor peace there is no peace in anybody's life nor help people are not getting help from each other they are not helping for pain and we are here as on a darkling plane so darkling plane is that we are standing in darkness it is darkness all around it might look beautiful to you but in the reality we are all surrounded by darkness there's darkness and nothing else swept with confused alarms of struggle and flight where ignorant armies clash by night and is lot of confusion is there alarms is signals of uh, danger is there struggle are there people are struggling people are fighting with each other why because uh, victorian era was a time where a lot of materialism was there and why a lot of materialism was there because of the industrialization so people who were into agriculture were coming to cities they wanted to have a better life so they were moving towards cities and a lot of industrialization was happening and because of a lot of industrialization was happening everybody wanted to have a better life for his or her own self so people are confused and they are fighting where ignorant armies clash by night ignorant armies people who are ignorant people who don't understand what actual uh, actually they should value people don't understand what uh, uh, what life is all about so they are doing what they do not know what they are fighting for but they are still fighting and to whom they fight they don't even know to whom they fight they don't even know the exact right person to fight to and what they are fighting against this is people have no idea what they are fighting for people uh, people generally doesn't know that what they are doing so um, you know this is how this poem has uh, been like so arnold uh, is a poet of nature and in dover beach nature is the background of arnold's philosophical reflection uh, he loved nature Uh, and arnold is not strictly speaking as a lyrical poet nor its musicality his strong point but uh, here in this poem the music and the haunting melody have an irresistible appeal dover beach despite this melancholy note is a poem of love arnold of course does not grow aesthetic in his songs of love but here he does declare that amidst uh, incertitude blankness and despair of love alone stands firm is the only source of comfort the only thing that stands here and is going to provide you with comfort is 
love. So the Dover Beach is a picture of married love, which is the characteristics of the Victorian tradition. Uh, in such an uncongenial atmosphere of disbelief and incertitude, honor says the only thing that endures is love. Love is the only source of solace in life. The world before them looks like a lovely dream on a moonlit night. It is, however, an enchanting illusion. So, according to the poet, this is what? This is an enchanting illusion. It's an illusion that has been created. It has no certitude. No certitude is, it has no certainty or peace or joy. The world is a dark link pain. In the world, men are fighting in the dark, completely ignorant whom they are fighting against and what exactly they are fighting for. So, uh, this is the poem by Matthew Arnold Dover Beach. I hope you have understood the poem. But in case if you have any problem in uh, any query regarding this, you can uh, post your queries uh, on um, classroom. I'm going to uh, I'm going to discuss all your problems with me. And uh, for the next class, I'm going to give a quiz on uh, Dover Beach. So be prepared, listen to it, uh, try and understand its points, try and write some notes. I'm going to provide you with the material as well. So uh, hope uh, that you have understood this poem. Uh, thank you.